Hey guys, sorry that I took so long to make and upload this video. I was trying to finish watching all the other shows that I was currently watching, and honestly, before I saw this episode, I just didn't have that much desire to see it. I don't know why, but now I'm hooked to this season already. I think it'll be a good one. So, my thoughts on them doing Blood of Water again with new players, I think it's going to be more interesting and possibly a little less emotionally jarring. Or, if it is emotionally jarring, it'll be in a better light because I think it'll be more sadness versus anger. You should be able to figure it out. Uh, off center here. Don't recall having to move the channel that much. Whatever. So, other things to mention. Uh... The Return of Exile Island. Now, um, when they first announced that they were going to bring that twist back, um, I wasn't too enthusiastic because my first thought about Exile Island was that, um, they introduced Exile Island to tie in to the Hidden Immunity Idol. Since now all the idols are hidden in that camp along with the clues being put there, I just feel like, um, it doesn't have much purpose, that's what I thought when I first heard about this, okay? But then I realized that the Exile Island thing is actually there more so to draw out the social relations, even though that was partially what it was for in the first place, but that's why it's being implemented in this season. It just ties in together with the Blover's Water theme and will stress the social relations. So for that part, It'll work just fine, but I feel like it's only going to work if it's a season like this, Blood vs. Water. And for the clue thing, it really isn't that effective, because since there's only one piece of paper with a clue in each urn, it means that producers have hid the idol the exact same way at both camps, like they did in Philippines. So, uh, yeah. And I wonder what they're going to do about rehiding them, given this situation. Hmm. Who knows? So, for Hidden Immunity Idols, it's not going to be that great, but for social relations, it will be. So, first impressions of the tribes as they came out into, um, the Hero Arena, as I think it's being called? Hmm. Whatever. How Jeremy ended up volunteering, no comment there. The duel with him versus his wife, well, it became a little more obvious that he was going to get ahead due to Val having trouble pulling herself over that um, uh, beam issue. And that's a little tough thing to do, because um, even though I'm actually a pretty tall guy, I probably would have trouble doing that because my upper body strength really isn't that great, so... Mm-hmm. So then the twist of having to choose, um... I mean, not just send your loved one to exile by winning the duel, but... Having to choose a member from your own tribe, that's gonna be pretty interesting, but it's also definitely gonna be a big amount... cause a big amount of social conflict later in the game, because, um... This particular method of choosing to send people to Exile Island is the most destructive method of sending the person to Exile Island that has ever been done, because, um, in, um, Exile Island, Cook Islands, uh, Fiji, and, uh, Gaboon, whatever tribe basically won every challenge would just send a person to Exile, not a big deal there, then, um, in... Micronesia, the winning tribe chose to send one person from their tribe and the other tribe to Exile Island, so that was kind of destructive, and then in Tokentines, winning tribe sends a member of the losing tribe, and the person of the losing tribe going to Exile chooses a member from the winner, that's also destructive and a lot more direct, but this is the most direct of all, and it's definitely going to be interesting come later in the game, and people are going to have to be very, very careful about their choices, but... I think that this also means that once the merge comes, we're going to have to kiss this twist goodbye, because, like, how can you do this in the merge, you know? Unless you're going to have a delayed merge, but I doubt that. So, uh... Jeremy choosing, uh, Keith? That actually didn't surprise me, and I was actually hoping he would, because Keith struck me as the person who would mind the least going 
to exile. And it's not much of an island, like with half the seasons. This season is just a sand strip, basically. With a bunch of rocks on it. So the tribes go over to their like, camps? The blue tribe? There really isn't that much to comment, except for like Jeremy trying to make an alliance with most of the women, along with Keith, and... I think this could be interesting, but my question is, what exactly is his motive, you know? Hmm, we'll probably learn more. Then as for my thoughts on Drew with that shelter comment, whatever, I barely caught any of it, and I was more interested in seeing a rocker's girlfriend, a Julie, I think her name is. And uh, her reaction to it shows that she, um, I don't want to say has a bit of the arrogance that uh, Rocker has, because... I think almost everyone's saying that Drew is the arrogant one in this one. Me, I barely caught it. But it, I get the feeling from her that she, although like a strong woman in terms of personality, can play a very different game from what Rocker can. So, uh, she's going to be interesting. And if I had to pick which one of them goes, I mean, stays longer right now, I'm betting on her, actually. That's pretty much the only pairing that I'm placing a bet like that on. Uh, so the Orange Tribe, uh, not much to mention except for the uh, Sap thing, and that just seemed kind of ridiculous to me. But yeah, Sap can be, um, uh, how should I phrase this? Well, just something not to be desired, because, like, I've gotten Sap on my hands a couple of times, and they felt weird for a while afterward, although that could be just because I was nervous, I really don't know. So, I th Moving on to the immunity challenge, I gotta admit, that was one heck of a good challenge. I really like how everybody had to act within the challenge, and that was a pretty nice puzzle at the end, and you also had to be creative with how you get up the uh, structure, and I love how Rocker is just throwing people up there. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> But, um, I was actually kind of disappointed with the end result, because based on the edit of this episode, I was actually kind of predicting that the Orange Tribe would win the challenge, but they didn't. So, I was a little disappointed there, but honestly, I wasn't that picky, to tell you the truth, just... Hmm. Although, I'll admit, I'm actually, again, going with, um... So far, at least, the usual trend that seems to happen, where if it's a blue team versus a non-blue team, the blue team ends up having, I think, the best strategists of the game. I don't know why I always think that. And of course I'm wearing blue. <laughs> Moving on! Ooh. <laughs> so the Orange Tribe comes back, and uh, Val appears to form pretty well within the tribe, so I was happy about that. The same thing happened with Keith. And, uh, it quickly becomes obvious that it's either Nadia that's going on the Orange Tribe or Dale, and that was a good job by him trying to start the fire, although I thought it was a bumble he broke his glasses, but since they're reading glasses, it's not a big deal. I wouldn't be able to do that, because these aren't for reading. I've got a weak muscle in my right eye, at least I think it's my right eye, or... Whatever, I forget what my parents told me, I don't care anymore, but... Uh, my overall thoughts were, I wasn't too picky about which one of them would go. It, I just became interested in what Josh and, uh, what's-her-face... Baylor were going to do. And I found it interesting that Baylor was so willing to break away from... Uh, the other girls, but then again, since she is, uh, hang on, let me make sure I... No, uh, her relation here, where is she? Come on, come on, come on. You're here somewhere. Okay, yeah. That's what I thought. But given how, uh, she's a uh, Missy's daughter, I got the idea that, uh, she would have a little bit of an independent nature based on what the highlight that I got from them, so... Yeah. Uh, so Josh being undecided, I don't think it has anything to do with the fact that he's gay. It's just stuff that happens, you know? So going into Tribal, I was trying to figure out how Josh and Baylor would vote, although I thought there was that much more of a chance that Nadia would go, just because if Baylor is unsure, you know. And like, Josh voting for Baylor, I didn't even need the results of the vote to know that he voted for her, because... Yeah. 
And what's the deal with Jeff showing the throwaway vote at the beginning? He should have waited until deep into the vote, like what happened at HVV, you know, when it was between Rob and Russell. He saved Coach's vote second to last, so we knew it came down to Jerry, you know? So it would have been better if Josh's vote had stayed there, so we'd be thinking that we need to see the votes from both Josh and Baylor. Then they show Josh's vote for Baylor, which means that we know it's all up to Baylor. Come on, that would have been a lot more tension going. The moment I saw that, I really knew it was not the uh, going. And, uh, thoughts on her going? I'm a little bummed because she was one of the more outspoken people, but at the same time, I do kind of understand why they did it. She wasn't, um, not bad socially, just... Not doing it in a nice way, although what the nice way is, no idea. And also, she has been on The Amazing Race twice. I have no comment on how she and her sister did on The Amazing Race. I've only seen the first two seasons, and I don't really have any intention of watching The Amazing Race until I uh, tackle Survivor and Big Brother stuff here. I do have an interest in doing it, but it's not a priority. Okay, uh, oh yeah, I forgot to talk about a rocker, um, like with everybody, I was surprised at how he seems to be trying to put that behind him and just, um, play Survivor, you know, as just another ordinary guy, so, um, yeah, I'll give him a little bit of a doubt or chance, whatever word you guys want to use, but if I get one bad remark from him, I'm probably gonna cut him loose, but yeah, I'm trying with him, alright? And uh, a couple of other things that I think I need to mention here. Um, Jeff from Big Brother being the new Survivor Live host. Yeah, that uh, sucked that Pav's no longer the host, because I really like Pav as a host. She's very knowledgeable about the game. Quoted as one of the best players out there on numerous occasions. Whatever. How about you guys' opinion on that? I, will, I like her, though. And uh, Jeff is a fan of multiple reality shows, because he's been on uh, two, and he stressed that he's a big Survivor fan also, but, you know, it's just tough for me to get past what he did in Big Brother 13, just, man. Those remarks he made, those are remarks that are hard to really let go, even though pretty much everybody in Big Brother 13 did bad remarks somehow, trust me. But he did a nice job of interacting with Nadia... And although he did kind of let loose that he'd probably have a loose mouth out there, well, he's already revealed that, so it wasn't as nerve-wracking. So I'm definitely giving him a chance, but like with Rocco, if I get one bad remark, and uh, you guys know what I'm talking about, done with him. And I do kind of hate to say that, but because I did like Jeff at one point, but... What can you do? I thought there was one other thing I wanted to mention. Oh yeah, and in case you guys didn't watch the Afterbus TV video, apparently Ryan is back with the crew, despite saying that he wouldn't be. He was able to telephone in for like 10 minutes, so... Yeah, glad that he's coming back, because just two people, it isn't always the best, even though I think with three people the conversations get out of whack, but whatever. Afterbus TV is just a fun addition to the program. Uh, anything I could comment on for Rob Sestronino? Not really, honestly. Just he's expanded his program even more due to how long he's been doing this, and I wish him luck. Although I kind of wish that he would stop giving me notifications about, um, other reality shows, along with almost spoiling to me the final free and eventual winner or whatever of Big Brother 16. I mean, like, I don't think Big Brother 16 is a season that many people like, which means that it's going to be another bad season to the show in a row. Come on. But seriously, Rob, try and be a little courteous, okay? I mean, like, if you want to discuss reality shows that happened a long while back, hey, no problem with that whatsoever. But if you're going to discuss current shows, mm, yeah, but Whatever, I, uh, I'm able to mute him pretty easily, so I was able to kind of avoid that. I've almost forgotten it. 
Okay, so the second take was actually um, pretty good. I got a little bit negative in the first take, that's why I re-recorded this video, but yeah. So it was a nice episode, I'm looking forward to what this season has to offer, and I'm hoping that it doesn't um, send the show plummeting badly again. If you haven't, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just watch Survivor Kogayan Finale Part 2. Later.